Are you building a godly legacy that actually matters? And I do want to emphasize actually matters because there's a lot of things that we could spend our time on, but what in the end actually matters most? I cannot tell you how many people I've seen in the church that are just chasing the rat race, believing if they just follow the right formula that it's all going to work out for their family in the end. Yet in reality, everything that we work for in this world is never guaranteed. You can work your whole life to pass off a load of assets and on the very last day you're on this earth, it would all slip out of your fingers. Then what do you have to show that actually made a difference? Nothing. That's why today I wanna teach you about the one difference that actually makes a future difference. On Church Door. Well, let's do a little test. Answer A or B and keep track of how many of each you pick. Firstly, are your greatest investments in A, building wealth to leave behind, or B, passing forward a rich faith? Secondly, my family will say this about me at my funeral. A, he was a great man. Or B, he was a man who truly loved God. And finally, if I die tomorrow, the greatest thing I will have to show for my life is A, the life legacy I built, or B, the legacy of faith I passed on. Now you might be thinking, Ian, I want all of those. Yet for most, you've been focused on one side or the other. For many of you, you've invested in column A, hoping that you can get to the end of your life and put a big exclamation mark that says, I made sure my family was well provided for. Now, Nothing innately wrong here, but there is a strong contrast to those who invested in column B. Those in column B are people who are investing so that by the end of their life, they can add a comma that says, my family has Jesus, therefore the story continues with them. I mean, do you see the difference? On one side, there's the temporal and the emphatic, and on the other hand, there's something eternal and open-ended. Now don't feel bad if most of your answers were in column A. The greatest thing is all of this can change in just a moment with one decidedly different habit. That's why I'm calling today's message the one difference that actually makes a future difference. For some, the test that I gave above seems like small, insignificant differences. And so small, maybe you're thinking, then why couldn't I just have both. Well, here's why. Let me give you a real life example that I've personally seen in my ministry many times. I've watched time and time again as the driven dad looking to provide for his family takes those extra hours at work. I love the game. I love the hustle, man. Thinking if I just grind hard now, I can live well with my family later. But what gets overlooked is the kiddos at home growing up fast and by the time you hit that payoff, if you hit the payoff at all, those kids are grown and gone and your influence is severely diminished in their life. Yeah, you might be able to pay their tuition to Harvard, but you'll never be able to recover the time that you missed being their daddy. And there are some studies that show before kids turn 12, they really rely on their mom, but it is in those crucial teenage years many kids turn to their dad. Rock me, daddy. Mm, that's nice. Which is right in the middle of where most career men are hitting their stride and the temptation to overwork is even greater. So in many of these situations, even though dad is technically living at home, those kids are still rendered fatherless. In other words, the investment that dad made fell completely flat short of its intended desire. So what is that one difference that actually makes a future difference? It is this. You've heard of EBTs, electronic bank transfers. Well, try thinking of this, IFTs, intentional faith transfer. If we don't make this the greatest priority in our lives to hand the faith we love to the next generation, we will have failed the next generation in the most egregious way. Money will only take them to the edge of this existence. Finding romantic love will oftentimes be like holding a wet bar of soap and having physical health can be robbed from them with one bad report from the doctor's office. That is why when we come to the 13th chapter of Josh, we find God reminding him at the end of his life, what is most important. And this is what it says. 
Now Joshua was old and advanced in years. And the Lord said to him, you are old and advancing in years. Yeah, well, thanks for reminding me, God. And he continues by saying, and there remains yet very much land to possess. In other words, there is more to do and more than you can do on your own and in this lifetime. So then God outlines what's left to accomplish concerning the land and follows by saying this, I myself will drive them out from before the people of Israel. Only allot the land to Israel for an inheritance as I have commanded you. So God says, I'm going to take care of the battle. And Joshua, all you need to think about is how to arrange your IFT. What comes next in these scriptures is what so many people seem to get bored with and just skip over because it's a seemingly unrelated, monotonous list of people and allotments. Yet within these names and allotments, there's one intriguing piece of information. The one thing that shines a light on how Joshua sought to distribute his faith to the next generation. Now I've said this many times, if it's repeated in scripture, there was something the writer wanted to be remembered. And this item is repeated at least three times, saying this in verse 14, to the tribes of Levi alone, Moses gave no inheritance. Now, wait a second. No inheritance. Is this some kind of spare the rod, spoil the child kind of thing? Well, stick with me a second. It continues by saying, the offerings by the fire to the Lord God of Israel are their inheritance, as he said to them. And then in verse 33, it says the same thing, but adds, the Lord God of Israel is their inheritance, just as he said to them. And then in the next chapter at verse four says, and no portion was given to the Levites and land, but only cities to dwell in with their pasture lands for their livestock and their substance. Well, now that you're thoroughly confused, let me unravel a little bit of this for you. The Levites and the tribe of Israel were the priests and the worship leaders. They led the people to know who God was and worship him well. And Joshua, instead of making a central place for their faith leaders to be, says, no, we need them in every part of our land. In other words, Joshua's IFT was to spread their faith practice into every part of their inheritance. For us, this means as we look at the life that God has given us, we must ask the question, how are we going to intentionally place our faith in the center of all we pass off? Through our work, our finances, our communities, our relationships, our health, our family, you name it. Our faith should touch all of these intentionally and above any Thing else. So the question is this, how do we do it? Well, we become apprentices of Jesus. We model our way after his way and bring others along with us. If you're not following Jesus today and you know you want to leave what is most important, your faith to the next generation, we have a team of people here that want to show you how to follow Jesus with your life. You can hit us up in the text down below, or you can text prayer to the number you see coming up on the screen right now. Do us a quick favor, help us promote great Christian content by hitting that subscribe button and the notification bell so that every single time we put out a piece of content, it's coming right to you. Or you can go the extra mile by going to rivervalleyrockford.org slash give and making a donation there. Every single cent that comes in goes right back out to help people just like you take their next step. Jesus. We pray blessings on you this week as you think about the life God has given you. May you put God in the center of all of it. So as you pass it off to the next generation, they know what is the most important thing to hold on to. We've been going through a study of the book of Joshua, so keep up with us as we're in this study by pressing the button you see in the center of the screen to watch one of the other messages on the book of Joshua.